Mostly, they're aloof. Sometimes, they're charming. And every now and then, they're even kittenish. This one loved somebody and <laughs> hates everybody else. But these exotic cats are always wild. Every kind of stuffed animal he has, the throat is ripped out of every stuffed animal. The stuffing, and it's like, how can an animal know a teddy bear that's not even, I don't have any more food. Um, you know, what a throat is on, and it's just instinctual. Scratches on her arms and legs remind Tammy Quist, never underestimate these animals. But Samson, an African caracal, reminds her again. It's all gone. A. Watch again. Samson could have slashed Tammy's face open, but a previous owner who kept him as a pet declawed the cat. They are dangerous and destructive. They do not make good pets. Um, they chew your furniture. They chew your walls. They ruin everything. Time and again, Tammy Quist hears stories of owners who give up the large cats they bought as pets. But where does a mountain lion go when no one wants it anymore? Everything about the animal is exponentially larger. And there are very few facilities that have the time or the resources to handle those animals, so their fate is ultimately uh, sanctuary or death. So two years ago, Tammy opened her sanctuary outside of Atlanta, Georgia. It wasn't long before 10 cats moved in. Rejected pets, cats too old to perform in roadside shows, and animals illegally kept at fur farms. You're okay, big boy. You but Tammy, a native Minnesotan, wanted to come home. Last year to house 10 cats was about $40,000. She was turned down by one Minnesota community after another. Then she asked the zoning board of Athens Township, just north of Anoka County, to give her a chance. For one moment, she's frustrated by the many questions. Because I go through this in every county, is I could have them as a pet. If I had five mountain lions as a pet, I would be allowed to. Tammy gets her permit. It's back to Georgia to pack up her cats. Levi, a mountain lion, was abused by a previous owner. The vet says it's too risky to tranquilize him. So Tammy and volunteers try to lure him into a crate. It works. Then, disaster. The bars don't hold. No, 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 he's going right behind him. Levi, in, in, in. He's afraid, and that makes him dangerous. They have to get him back inside the fence. Can you imagine that happening on a damn plane? The zoo had promised Tammy the crate would hold a lion. The veterinarians start tranquilizing the other cats. The first injection, it takes 20 minutes to work. They use a blowgun and caution. Finally, lynxes, caracals, servals, and mountain lions are ready to go. Bye, sweetie. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> and it's off to the airport. The cats are loaded by about midnight for their flight to their new home. The cargo plane is called the Kitty Hawk. Good girl. When we visit, the cats appear happy in the cooler Minnesota climate. Um, he still has the capability of getting upset and nipping, but he's not life-threatening right now. He Tammy does not buy, sell, breed, or in any way profit from these animals. And except for her supportive neighbors, she's not open to the public. The Society for Wildcat Education is totally dependent on donations to pay for the cat's keep. Tammy provides sanctuary for life and hopes someday her service will not be needed. Good girl.